Good morning and a warm welcome, stay to you. You're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. And this is the Global Markets Roundup Show. And in today's show, we'll explore the latest updates from the equity, currency and commodity markets from across the globe. Let us first look at the US market's performance from yesterday's closing. And the S&P 500 index and Dow Jones Industrial Average edged higher on Wednesday, August 11th, after the utility and basic materials stocks advanced amid a positive economic outlook. And the S&P 500 was up 0.25%, the Dow Jones rose 0.62%, the Nasdaq Composite Index fell 0.16%, the small cap Russell 2000 was up 0.49%. US Consumer Price Index rose marginally by 0.5% last month compared to 0.9% in June, according to the latest inflation data released by the Labor Department on Wednesday. And the figures showed that inflation might have peaked, although remained significantly high, on a yearly basis at 5.4% in the 12 months ended July 31st. And markets were in high spirits the day after the US Senators passed a $1 trillion US dollar bill, infrastructure spending. And it will now go to the House of Representatives for a final green light. And meanwhile, another spending bill of 3.5 trillion US dollars is being discussed to take care of other government priorities like climate change and poverty. On Wednesday's session, utility basic materials and industrial stocks led the S&P 500 segments and eight sectors of the index stayed in the green. Healthcare stocks were the bottom movers, however. And the American cybersecurity firm Norton LifeLock has agreed to acquire its European rival, Avast, in an 8.6 billion US dollar deal and shares of Norton LifeLock surged 8.32% after the news. The cryptocurrency exchange platform Coinbase Global stocks rose 2.42% after the company exceeded an analysts' expect expectations in the second quarter. Its net profit jumped 4,900% year on year. Its earnings per share came in at $3.45 US. And shares of space flight company Virgin Galactic plunged 14.33% in the intraday trading after analysts changed the stock status from equal weight to underweight. And the AI lending platform Upstart stocks rose 19.07%. After reporting second quarter earnings, its revenue soared 1,018% year on year. And this is how the US market performed. It is time for a short break. But after the break, we'll take a look at the stock markets in the European and Asian sectors. So please stay tuned to Calcine TV. Hi, I'm Sage and get ready to take the crypto ride with me on Calcine TV. Watch the crypto buzz every Tuesday and join the excitement at Kalkine TV from Bitcoins to NFTs to Dogecoin and DeFi. We have updates about everything around these digital currencies. Understand the investing rationale and the risks involved in the space with me, Sage, on Crypto Buzz. Keep watching Kalkine TV. Welcome back. This is Sage. You're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup show. And let's now look at the European and Asian share markets performance. The global shares hit record highs on Wednesday after the data showed the US consumer price increases slowed in July, easing concerns that the Federal Reserve will imminently signal a scaling back of bond purchases. And the MSCI All Country Index, a gauge of stocks across the globe, hit a record high and was trading up 0.29%. The European shares hit record highs, clocking their longest winning streak in two months on Wednesday on optimism about an upbeat earnings season, while a slowing increase in US inflation calmed nerves around the monetary policy tapering. And the stock 600 index rose 0.4% to hit an all-time high for an eighth consecutive session with gains led by retailers, banks and real estate stocks. Now let's move on to the Asian markets, beginning with the Japanese stock market. And Japanese shares closed higher for a fourth straight session on Wednesday, helped by the strong earnings from the Bridgestone and other firms, while banking stocks received support from rising US bond yields. And the Nikkei share average climbed 0.65%, its first close above 28,000 since July 16th. Though it could face resistance at around the 28,300 level from its downward sloping trend line since mid-June. 
The Shanghai stocks rose on Wednesday as the real estate and banks rebounded sharply, but the blue chip index fell, dragged down by the healthcare and consumer staples shares. And the Shanghai Composite Index gained 0.1%, while the blue chip CSI 300 index fell 0.6%. Over to South Korea now, and the South Korean shares slipped for the fifth straight day on Wednesday as domestic COVID-19 cases rose to a record high, while concerns about a decline in the chip prices drove the tech shares lower. And the benchmark Kospi fell 0.70%. So that's how the markets in Europe and Asia performed. It's time for a short break, but after the break, we'll take a look at the stock markets um, a little closer to home. So stay tuned to Kalkine TV. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Monday on the Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sage and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup show. Let's now look at the Australian share market's performance. S&P ASX 200 index settled 0.3% higher on Wednesday and today the rise in commodity prices could lift the domestic miners and energy stocks. The US bond yields fell after a slight moderation in the US consumer prices in July and the benchmark 10-year notes yield fell to 1.3287%, down from 1.342% late on Tuesday. And the US dollar also fell following the release of the consumer price report. The easing in consumer prices has taken some pressure off the Federal Reserve with respect to the taper timing and the dollar index was down 0.124% at around 10 in the morning. The crude oil prices advanced on Wednesday after the U.S. said that it would not call the domestic producers to boost the crude output and the U.S. crude oil futures closed up 1.41%. The Brent crude futures settled up 1.15% and the energy stocks such as Woodside Petroleum and Santos could trade higher on Thursday. And the gold prices also rose following a slower increase in the U.S. consumer prices in July, which cooled concerns that the Fed would taper its economic support sooner than expected. And the U.S. gold futures ended up 1.2%. Spot gold added 1.4% and the U.S. gold futures rose 1.26%. ASX listed gold stocks such as Northern Star Resources and Newcrest Mining could trade higher on Thursday. And lastly, let's take a look now at the metal updates. The Dalian iron ore surged about 4% on Wednesday after China's output curbs triggered concerns about supply. And the most traded iron ore for January 2022 delivery on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended up 3.7%. And the three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange had dipped 0.1%. And thank you for joining us on that report. That's all for now, but do keep watching Kalkine TV as we bring you the latest news and trending market updates live from Sydney. Sage signing off.